Hi, Paul Barrett Hassett here, author of The Sulphite Connection, A Hidden Pandemic Revealed. Finally, an answer to why we're all sick. Today I'd like to share with you about salicylates and the sulphite connection. Now many people who are sick with inflammatory illnesses, right through to mental and emotional problems, will benefit from today's video because what I'm about to share with you over the next few minutes is key to understanding food intolerance and I believe is the key to understanding a whole raft of unexplained illnesses including childhood illnesses and behavioural problems. Well, okay, let's jump straight in. Salicylates. Salicylates are a natural occurring food chemical that work kind of like an insecticide deterring pests and protecting the produce. As the fruit and vegetable ripens, the levels of salicylates are reduced. Now there are a major number of people in the world that are salicylate intolerant. In fact, research shows that approximately 40% of patients with rhino, sinusitis, nasal polyps and asthma, 60% of people with food-induced itchy rashes, headaches or migraines, 70% of people with irritable bowel syndrome, and 75% of children with behavioural problems may be sensitive to salicylates. Now, sulphites are commonly known as a food preservative. There are also natural occurring sulphites in foods like garlic and eggs. Plus, we also have organically bonded sulphur in proteins, such as amino acids like cysteine and methionine. There are also man-made sulphites, and they're toxic to the human body, and amounts as little as 20 parts per million have been responsible for many deaths. Not everyone appears to notice the symptoms and some people appear to tolerate sulphites in high doses without ill effects. And no one really knows why conclusively, but there is a lot of research data available on some suspect reasons. And when you apply the solution, you get results. So I'm going to cover with you some of those and then link it all together, if that's okay with you. Well, let's begin with sulfoxidation. Self-oxidation is a detoxification pathway that occurs in our cells in which sulfite oxidase converts sulfites into sulfates so they can be safely eliminated from the body. It's okay, stay with me. I'm going to break it down so it all makes sense. Just keep breathing. All right, sulfite oxidase is part of sulfur metabolism that occurs in the mitochondria, a membrane-enclosed structure found in the human cell. Now inside the mitochondria is where sulphite oxidase takes place. Sulphite oxidase is an enzyme that oxidizes sulphites to sulphate and then in part assists in the generation of ATP. Now ATP, adrenosine triphosphate, transports chemical energy within cells for metabolism. So here we are in the intracellular space and on the left you'll see that sulfite heads into the mitochondria along with molybdenum. Sulfite oxidase converts sulfites into sulfate which is harmless to the body and then goes through a complex process where it finally ends up in part playing an important role in ATP. Now research is popping up all over the place linking sulfoxidation issues to food sensitivity and food allergies autism in children, arthritis, and other inflammatory diseases. I'd like to talk with you now about mitochondrial disorders. Did you know that salicylates have been linked to mitochondrial disorders, including autism, bowel issues, oxidative stress, and small intestine damage? So we're seeing something serious going on here with the mitochondria. So does that mean that poor self-oxidation is a mitochondrial disorder? Or that mitochondrial disorder includes poor self-oxidation? Here's what I've noticed over the years in my natural therapies clinic. Sulfite consumption, even in levels as low as 3, 4, 5, 6 parts per million, often cause salicylate sensitivity to go through the roof. Eliminating hidden sources of sulphite consumption has allowed me and others to increase amine and salicylate consumption, including medium to high-containing salicylate foods like honey and avocados. 
There is a relationship between severe allergies and long-term sulphite consumption in levels lower than 10 parts per million. So here on one hand, we have sulphides, and any time that you consume those hidden or undeclared sulphides, you're stressing your sulphur metabolism, in turn, stressing or irritating mitochondrial disorder. And on the other hand, we have salicylates, and when we're consuming foods that contain salicylates, you're stressing or irritating mitochondrial disorders. Now, can I say with 100% scientific certainty that that's what's actually going on in the body? No, of course not. But what I do know is that the antidote works. So what's the antidote? What's the remedy here? Well, by reducing all hidden and undeclared sulphites in your diet along with reducing salicylates. That's the key. You, they must go hand in hand. If you keep consuming a corn-based diet or a gluten-free diet that includes flours like corn, potato or tapokia, then you're overloading your system with low levels of hidden and undeclared sulphites. One must do both to achieve the greatest results. Okay, well, that's it today. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Next time I have a very special treat for you. Now, if you're thinking to yourself right now, what foods can I eat? I'm running out of choices. Well, you're in for a treat next time because I'm going to share something with you very special. So until we meet again, bye for now.